So we're going to be going over uh, some things in academia, and it's kind of outside of academia, specifically mail merges, uh, but pulling them from reports and exports from academia. Um, and then alternatively, uh, you know, I'd like to show you our report scheduler just so that, you know, if this is too much, you know, that maybe that might be a, a better alternative. So. And uh, you can see there's different components to sending out mail merges. Uh, it's technically using multiple files um, to kind of get that accomplished and ultimately sending through your Outlook uh, on your desktop. Um, and then, uh, you know, like when we go in academia to schedule a report, there's different options that you can choose from. We'll, we'll be seeing all those uh, that you can do. So uh, just kind of going over the, the components here. Uh, so we have an Excel file that we'll need from uh, pulled probably from uh, academia with a maybe it could be a report of your visitors. It could just be a list of your users. Maybe there's a certain group of users, um, but it has to have their contact info in that uh, Excel uh, file. So we'll definitely need that. The other component is we'll need a Word document, and this is really just going to be um, an email message uh, that you write up, you know, in, including all the information or details about what you're wanting to share uh, with those uh, folks. And then um, if you want to add an extra layer of challenge, uh, it would be to put a PDF attachment. Um, and I did put optional in there because uh, it does require extra tools. You can kind of see a put the link to one uh, down there uh, and um, also requires that you kind of link to it in the file that you uh, create in the first part here in the Excel file. So um, yeah, and uh, I'll, I'll go over that, uh, but this is just kind of a brief overview of how that that looks. Uh, once you get that going uh, and everything's set up, have it the way you want it. Um, we'll see how uh, you would send that out through Outlook. And basically, um, when you send a mail merge out, it's going to use whatever your de default email is. So if you only have one email, <laughs> it will be coming directly from you. Um, so usually what I recommend is if you have like an email uh, that you have access to that um, you would want the messages to be sent out through. So maybe it's like your center's email something like that, you might want to just make it your default temporarily uh, while you do this process. And then uh, once you've uh, sent the message, you can go ahead and switch back to uh, using one of your personal emails. <clears throat> also, another thing is to try to run it uh, when your computer has uh, maybe not that much stuff going on. If, if you're you know running it on a server, if you're running it Locally, you know, if you have a ton of other things going, it's going to need to process uh, each one of those emails. So uh, just some things to consider. So real quick before we go on to the next slide, I'm going to go ahead and jump out. And we're going to go to. Academia real quick. OK, and I just happen to have like an appointment screen pulled up, but. Um, I'm going to go back to the home here and we're going to first visit some reports. Uh, typical reports that would be good um, is anything that has like the student uh, contact info. So we have like this one is a attendance by student with contact info and I just started to type in the word contact. Um, there's also another one <clears throat> that's pretty good. It's a student list with uh, if they visited. So uh, this is just really a list. It doesn't uh, give you like the visits that they actually had, but it's a list of students that did visit uh, the center. So we'll we'll see a couple of those. So I'm going to go back to the uh, the contact info one um, and give you an example of like what I might you know pull to do a mail merge with. So. Um, I'm going to select the time period and in my sample um, I don't have that much data so I'm going to pull the full fall semester and um, <clears throat> we're not going to filter on anything but maybe uh, the location. So for this one I'm going to just choose all my active services. 
And once I have this, I want to make sure that I pull this last uh, file format. So I have a CSV file. Uh, it's basically an unformatted Excel um, file. And that's going to give us our best results for being able to do this mail merge. And so I go ahead and just view the report. OK, and that should be ready. OK, now one of the things that you are going to want to do when you open up um, this file is um, all the report filters that were used, basically the first three lines um, are not going to be needed for this. Uh, in fact, it'll kind of mess up your mail merge if you leave them in there. So you want to just remove those first three. And then you can see what we're, we have left is all the, the actual data. Now this one was a good one because I actually have some visit information uh, for each one of the students. And we can see there's three different students here that uh, we have in this report and this could have been like a week's worth of data, you know, maybe in a center or maybe a day's worth. I don't know, <laughs> but you might, you know, obviously have more uh, in there. And uh, the one thing that we're kind of looking for is that we at least have their email and the name of the student uh, is good to have and you may even want to separate that out. So in this case, in this particular report, it's actually got them combined so you can do some things like adding an extra column and go in the data tab, text to columns, and maybe we want to separate it by a comma and spaces. And I'll just hit finish. There we go. And then I've got uh, their last name and first name, and I can even relabel these. So it's whatever um, you want to label those as. and get rid of anything that you don't see as needed. So there was a blank column in there. Um, I think we're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and save this in my reports folder. And uh, CSV or Excel, whichever you want to save it as fine. I'll call it my. Oops, I got caught on my ball. Find two visitors. OK. And save that locally. So now we've got the uh, the Excel file. This is going to be what's used. We can actually use any of these fields as a merge field in the uh, Word document. So I'm going to just start off with a blank Word document. So we're going to go ahead and open that up. OK, and blank document. So um, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and get that connected to our other file. So um, and we're going to go to mailings and select recipients and use an existing list. And I'm going to go ahead and just look for. My folder where I keep my reports. So and I actually pulled a few different ones so we can see different ones uh, how that might work. So this is the fall visitors report. Uh, OK, and something went awry with the file. I could just tell by the way it looked. So I'm going to go ahead and reopen that file. OK, something went a little silly over. So I'm going to go ahead and um, just try to get the columns sorted back out. So let's see what we have here. OK, yeah, it just messed up, so I might just start over. <laughs> um, but that, that's where I would connect the file. And let me I'm going to try one of the ones that I already saved then since that um, didn't work out so well. <laughs> All right, center reports. I'm going to use this one. OK, and it's just going to have this uh, table screen come up. You say OK. And the reason why that's important is now I can write my letter and I'll just say, you know, hi, and maybe their first name. So I want to go ahead and 
select that. Oh, this is not working out so well. <laughs> Here, I'm going to close it. We'll start again. OK. OK, so I'm going to get rid of the first three rows. We're going to split this up. So I'm kind of going back through that really fast um, and finish. And this was their oops, last name, first name. Get rid of this column and we'll sit, we'll just save it over the top. OK, and I saved that one as an Excel file. Maybe it like that better. So. All right, and we'll start back over. So we open up our Word doc, just a blank document at first. We're going to go to mailings, select recipients, use existing list. And I just have to locate those uh, Excel files again. And there's my one that we just created. OK, perfect. All right. So we'll start again. Maybe hello. There we go. OK, so this is what I was looking for. So now I have all these different fields that I can go ahead and uh, include in my um, my mail merge. And we'll just say hi first, comma, bring it down. Uh, oops, wanted to let you know about a special event happening and let's say we had you know details i'm just going to put details <laughs> in there um and um you know hope to see you there and <clears throat> the success center let's say <clears throat> okay so um I could have added more things in there. Um, maybe we wanted to, uh, you know, say something like, I know you uh, came in for X services, you know, this semester. Um, and you can include, so this was like the services uh, and blah, blah, blah. So basically, once that you know looks like the, the letter you want to send out, uh, you can actually go ahead and click on this where it says preview results. This is still under the mailings tab. So you can see the first uh, person in that uh, letter. And you know, I know you came in for virtual tutoring. Just want to let you know about the special event happening. So you can kind of see how that will look before you even go ahead and send it. Um, <clears throat> Uh, once I'm happy with this, I'll go ahead and save this as the. Uh, here, let me browse to a location. And I'm going to go ahead and just save that in the same location where my uh, reports are. <clears throat> and we could call this uh, student event mailer. Okay, and save. There we go. So now that I've had that saved, um, I could exit out of it. I can minimize it and come back to it. Um, but what we would want to do is uh, go ahead and open up our Outlook. <clears throat> and this is where um, those accounts come into play. So right now you can see in mine, I only have one email account uh, set up here. Um, if I wanted to add additional ones, I would click on the um, file uh, add account option here. Um, and if I just want to see which ones I already have, like maybe I know I already have more than one, I can go to account settings and click on that again. 
and I can see which ones there are. So if I had multiple in here, like maybe I had my center's email, I could actually set that as the default right now. And then that way it would go out not as as me, uh, but as the center's uh, email. Now in this case, we're just going to go ahead and um, uh, send this out as me just because. So I'm going to minimize that. And we're going to pull our mail merge up. And at this point, um, I can go ahead and finish and send email message. So uh, finish and merge. And what that's going to do is going to merge those two uh, files, the Excel document that we had all the data in, and then uh, this Word document that we created for the message. Um, additionally, like I said, there are some add-on tools. You might not you know, go ahead and send it at this point. Um, if you had a, that add-on that I mentioned, you could even uh, choose to like attach a file, like maybe you had a file, uh, you pulled reports for each one of your um, students. Um, so if I go to that reports folder, you know, I could have pulled a report for each one of those students uh, from academia, and then I wanted to send those and attach those uh, to each student. Um, if I did that, I would have to include um, here, let's go back to it. I would have to include in the file uh, where that folder is located. <clears throat> so let me see. This is one that I had prepared before. So you can see here I have like my file location as well. So if I was to use that add on, um, we're not going to do that today. So I'm just going to go ahead and exit out of it. But that's how you would uh, attach those files. Um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead though and finish it up, send email messages. And <clears throat> for the two, you're going to go ahead and make sure you select their um, uh, email. Now, I remember, I don't know if, if I, I could have relabeled this, but uh, I remember that their email was on student three here. Um, and now it wants to know what subject I want to put. And I'm just going to put we are to our special event. So whatever you know, message you want to have out there and you can choose uh, what format. If you got really fancy with the email, you know, uh, it could be HTML, you could be plain text. And now you can choose um, which uh, folks to send this to. Um, technically, uh, you know, uh, I would just probably send to all, you know, in that file. You could jump around and skip over people that are in that Excel file uh, by choosing uh, the record number. And it's just going to be like the in the, the rows that like, you know, you have three students, so it could be maybe I only want to send it to one of those three. Um, in that case, I might use like current record. Maybe somebody said they didn't get it and I need to resend it so I could find them and uh, send it. But for right now, we're going to do all. And when I hit OK, you can actually see right here uh, where it actually previewed the name uh, while it was actually sending those. Now, if I went back to Outlook and looked in my Outbox, um, our sent items here, you can see each one of those went out to uh, their uh, respective person. So. And some of them might still be in my outbox. Yeah. Yeah, OK, but it did send those out. And actually, they should be in my inbox. because I think I used my email. Um, I have to send receive. Oh, yeah, here we go. I'm not sure where they're at. OK, maybe they're traveling right now, but those did go out. And uh, at that point, I could switch myself back to my uh, default email. Uh, and I'd be done with it. OK, now we did uh, create a report scheduler in academia to avoid having to go through all those uh, steps. So I wanted to just kind of uh, show you that and uh, how how this process works. Uh, when you get to the schedule report, you'll have 
all these different options such as setting the frequency, uh, naming the uh, the job that you're running, picking your recipients or audience, and some other report options. So we'll take a look at that now. Um, so we're going to start off with the report section again. And for this one, I'm just going to pick any report. I don't have to be really selective because uh, with this one, we can actually choose the audience. And since academia knows um, everyone's uh, contact info, like their email, uh, if you're uploading that, that is, uh, it should be able to reach out to them. So I can pick, you know, uh, with this one, I can pick from any of our reports that we have available. So maybe I want to uh, send out the attendance by service report that includes their course information. <clears throat> and I want to do this weekly, so I'm going to use one of these non specific uh, ranges here. So we're going to do last week, so it's only last week's data. And I only want to do this for my center, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this is checked with all the active services. And that's pretty much it. So I have my my time range that I want it to, to display in that report and the center selected. Um, and I can choose my format. I'm just going to leave it as a PDF because they, they should get that fine. And instead of view report, we're going to go ahead and hit schedule report. So at this point, I'm going to go all this weekly. Attendance report. Thank you. Everything they have on there is all pre-made. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, and so once we have this uh, set, we're going to go ahead and set the schedule. I'm going to go ahead and make it weekly, like I said. Um, I'm going to have this go out on Tuesday, so I have like maybe Monday to correct anything before it goes out. Um, but because I chose last week, it's always going to be uh, the dates for last week. So whatever our time range was, um, I like that a little bit better than the last seven days um, because it gives me um, a little buffer that I can go ahead and uh, get corrections before this gets sent out. Um, I can also choose the time of day that it goes out. So um, I could say uh, maybe in the morning. It's going to give me some uh, kind of uh, preview of like the next five sends and when those would be. So looking it's going through November and December. And I'm going to go ahead and hit next. So now I get to pick my recipients. And this is where. Um, you know, I would uh, go ahead and either pick the specific people. Maybe it's a group of students that I'm working with. Um, Fred and I have uh, I think it was Cinder and uh, Miksha. So I could I could actually find those uh, individuals um, <clears throat> or um, there are some that's like all instructors, all tutors, uh, depending on how that I want to do that. In this case, I'm going to use this option and we go next. And because these are students, I don't want them to all receive the same report. Like I said, even when I was going to send it through the mail merge, I pulled individualized reports for them. Um, but this one, this setting here, this uh, report option is basically to only send out uh, the information that pertains to that student. So we're going to have individual emails sent that way. And I'm going to go next. And in here, it just kind of gives me a summary of everything that we've done so far. So each recipient's going to get a different report. It's going to be based on the week before. Uh, and this was actually chosen back on the report filters here. Um, and it's going to go out weekly on Tuesdays at 6 a.m. And it's for three specific people that I've been working with. So I'll go ahead and finish. OK, and it's successfully scheduled, so um, I should expect to see that Tuesday mornings. So. Um, I feel like that is a lot easier uh, in the system. Uh, so I just want to kind of show both ways to kind of go about that. Um, but there are instances where you might want to, you might prefer a mail merge, uh, maybe to be able to uh, customize the message that goes out, <coughs> um, you know, over what we have. Um, we do have uh, in the control panel some email templates. Hmm. 
and I don't know though if we have one yet for that. So that might be, uh, you know, where you might want to use a mail merge if you need to customize the message. So we have ones for surveys and other things, but not for the schedule reports. So um, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go ahead and jump out of that and ask if we have any questions. It looks like uh, we haven't had any questions yet in the chat. Um, if anybody does have any questions, I'll give it a minute. And um, well, uh, I see there's some people typing. I'm going to go ahead and try and find the mm -hmm. the link yeah, to like... that the add on uh, so that I can share that with everyone if they wanted to. Um, so Troisha wants to know, do you use these for the directors of areas to show the monthly usage of their centers? Um, yeah, you could. And in fact, um, uh, either the schedule report or the um, Uh, mail merge would work good for that. I think the schedule report makes it a lot simpler though, because when you're going in and you're setting um, that, so let's say I got a report and, you know, um, let's just do an attendance summary. Maybe they, they don't really want the details, they want more of a summary. So we'll go with like attendance summary and, you know, you could filter it out for your location and you can choose what it summarizes by so maybe by the the service that was used so they could get numbers on you know what the service is maybe you want to show the charts um, you could even view the report first to make sure it's exactly what you want and uh, so if i do this last week you know use the same kind of filter i used before um, and we'll just say uh, weekly director's report and I mean you could use this you know monthly if you didn't want them to get it as often or whatever but uh mm. when I go to those last settings though um so here we'll do weekly kind of have the same thing where it comes out on a Tuesday and here I could do specific emails so if they're not somebody that's in academia instead of specific people because they have to be in academia to use that option so if this was like my director and they don't actually log in to the, the software um, this is where I might want to use the um, specific email address and then in here I could actually um, just separate whoever I want to get this on a regular basis uh, by a comma so you know maybe um, the director at my center the edu comma uh, maybe institutional research <clears throat> is interested uh, so whoever it is you just add an extra comma and then start the next email and uh, you don't need any spacing or anything it'll remove those out if you do but uh, we'll do next. And um, when I send it this way, though, with individual email, notice that all these are grayed out because I can't send them individual emails because they don't exist in the system. And um, that makes sense in a way, you know. Um, so if I go next, uh, it's just going to tell tell us that they're all getting the same report. Uh, it has two email addresses that it found, and uh, it's going to be about the week. Um, before and it's scheduled every Tuesday. So I would just hit finish and then that's scheduled to go out. <clears throat> and if I want to go back to my reports and view the uh, either past reports I ran or the scheduled reports, I could go ahead and see all the ones I've done. And here's that director's report. If I ever needed to to cancel that, um, I could inactivate it and save it. Um, maybe I want to reactivate it later um, when when they want those emails again. <clears throat> um, and or I could just go ahead and delete that altogether if I select it and hit delete here.